Okay, so first up with the resin ring, there's a couple steps that are going to be new here. So the first thing we want to do is bore a hole, a hole in the center, and this is just to create the actual ring blank. So to start off, I found a piece for my Dremel that I thought would create a hole through the center. Um, if you don't have a piece like this, you could use a drill with just a drill bit in it, or I've used a Dremel just with a sanding bit in it before. So you just need to find something that you can create a starting hole, a starting point to create the actual ring out of this blank. After you're finished boring out the hole with the either machining tools or your Dremel, I went ahead and created a comfort finish on the inside using my Dremel. So I just put it at an angle, spun the ring, and let it kind of create a rounded edge, almost like beveling the inside of the ring. And I did that to both sides. And then I began hand sanding. For the sanding process on this ring, I used 220, 500, and 1000 grit sandpaper. And I like to just go 220, a really nice wet sand, and I'll flip the ring halfway through. That way I'm sanding both of the edges really well. That way we get a really nice smooth comfort finish on the inside of the ring. And you can make sure that everything has a really nice uniform shape if you're switching sides. If you don't switch, it's hard to cre create like an even, even finish, even bevel on the inside. So I like to just flip it about halfway through each sandpaper just to make sure that I'm sanding each side equally and creating a uniform shape on the inside of my ring. After I'm happy with the inside, I went ahead and put it onto a, a ring mandrel. For this one, you have to be really careful with these when you're putting them on mandrels. If you over tighten it, you'll cause the ring to break because it'll cause too much pressure and it'll just crack and kind of shatter the, the resin. So you want to put it on so that it will stay in place, so tight enough for that, but loose enough that it won't crack or break. So for me, I always use electrical tape when I'm using a little bit more fragile material and I, I make sure that I just tighten it little bits at a time, kind of just feeling the tension against the Allen key that I'm using just to kind of judge how much pressure I'm putting on the ring. So it's hard to say exactly how much you need to put, but you do need to make sure that it will stay in place for these next steps.
On the inside, I did 220, 500, and 1,000. And I just, caught, I just stopped the lathe every once in a while and flipped the direction it was spinning. This is something I always like to do with my rings. I just feel that it helps ensure a smoother finish along the ring. So as I was going, I just was wet sanding, f switching directions occasionally, and just making sure that I was applying even pressure throughout the ring. Since it is resin, it's a little bit softer and easier to misshape. So you just want to be careful that you're not over sanding in one spot too much. You want to make sure you're doing nice, even, evenly distributed pressure, evenly distributed sanding so that your ring has a uniform shape and look to it. After the sanding, I did the, the liquid polish for this ring. I think it works really well with the resin and I, I was really happy with how this turned out. Once, uh, once I was done sanding, I was really happy with it. So I just used the step one, two, and three AstroTech polish for this ring, and it gave us a really nice crystal clear finish on the resin. So I was really happy with how this ring turned out. I think that the polish just allowed us to really see the shredded cash in there and be able to see through the areas that had a little bit less of the cash. So I, I was really happy with how this ring turned out. This was honestly my first ever all resin ring like this. I'd never done one of these before, so I was a little nervous going into it, but I, I just took my time making sure to make small adjustments and kind of experiment with different techniques. So that, that would be my biggest advice for you as you go creating this ring for yourself, is sure it's gonna be a new, new process for a lot of you but just make sure you take your time watch this video a couple times maybe watch some of our other Patrick Dare designs videos where Patrick has done similar projects where he's used resin to create different rings just so that you can see different techniques and kind of learn how you could apply them to your ring making so I really enjoyed this one I'm really happy with how it turned out I don't think I would really change anything with how I made it. Maybe I would use my Dremel a little bit more just because it's a little bit faster than the machining tools. But overall, I really like this ring. I'm so excited to see how you guys do it, see how they turn out for, for all of you. And I, I hope you had as much fun as I do. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next month.